Well, I've never. What is that? Hear the difference? I'm 50 millimeters away. When the finger's closer to the wire. No. And I don't know if there's any spark gap there at all. sparking inside there no? so that's some sort of earthing okay I've got my earth ground here actually let's just grab my earth ground Sorry. No. no. Earth ground doesn't seem to affect it, so just my hand. Ah, oh, that's what it is. It's this clicking on and off. It's the field. I thought it was off. And I must, when it was sitting there, that must block the field, my hand. <laughs> Oh, the things. I only just got this, so I didn't recognise the sound. But it makes it a ticking. There you go, eh? This uh, can detect a field. Quite a way away. I, think, uh, I haven't read the instructions yet, but it's got two settings. This is... Geez, that's that, that's seven hundred millimeters from there to there. So seventeen hundred millimeters above that spark gap, it can be picked. And it's got this little part here. You point your finger on it, it makes it a lot more sensitive. Not bad for eight dollars. Maybe not this afternoon. So okay very easily get to uh, go down a little tangent doing stuff like this now I'm at uh, 0.22 watts um, so a quarter of a watt is pretty much the lowest setting it might go down to uh, 80 oh, there you go 80 you got to adjust this I can do that with my hands you got to get it really small because the energy is so much smaller. Let's see what we can do here. Don't know what this screwdriver is rated for. It says a thousand volts, but okay. So a little spark get there now. Um, oh, I can move the actual. Oh, I can move the actual uh, tube hard to see so that's right on it and it's getting a pulse oh, I'll pull that back Jeez, there's so many things to think about um, I'm going to try and go down from 0.8 volts down to 0.75 type of thing so it's all about the forward voltage of the uh, transistor or MOSFET that's inside that and the closer you can get your the way I've set these up is you can literally just push them and then that can be pulled around to make it closer I found it's the best way to do tiny spark gaps 
Now you've got to have a certain amount of spark gap, otherwise it'll go out of resonance. That's actually going. Uh, that's probably a bit better. I'll have to set up my light, I think. I just got this little touch lamp, which is probably not the best thing because it goes on and off sometimes as you do things. <laughs> um, yeah, all right. Here we go. So I'll hide a bit of that light. A bit bright for me. That's probably better. Okay, so that spark gap there is minimal. I'll just adjust it a bit. So I've got it where it is there. It's like really tiny. And if I just adjust that ever so much, I can get the flickering to disappear. There you go. In purples and whatever, you don't see that in real life. You only see that on the screen. But if we just get that spark gap a bit there. Oh, it's just flickering a little bit. I'll make sure we don't have a spark gap here. You can see a bit of a spark gap, can you? Okay. So it's not enough to... All that energy of the spark gap can be end up being used in the lamp. So you just want to... Sorry, the other way around. That energy in the spark gap gets used in the spark gap and not in the lamp. So we'll just go on full. And there you go, that fluorescent light's lit very dimly. It looks quite bright on the um, phone, but it's, it's not very bright. That should light up the whole room, right? So there you go, that's um, 0.09 watts. Uh, I'll try and go down one more. Oh, down one more. Now it's, it looks like it's going on and off, but in real life it's just flickering. So I'm going to adjust the spark gap again and see if I can get that flickering to disappear. No. Yeah, there we go. That's that's the tiniest of tiniest spark gaps. It's just just so tiny, but that's on permanently to the naked eye. I can't see. I just see a dull brightness. I can adjust this now. I can even get it out of sync with the actual camera. There you go. That's 0.08 watt. Let's see if we can go one more down. One more. Oh, I did. 0.07 watts. Let's see if I can retune that resonance to the best it can be. Yeah, I'll go down one more if I can. Ah, oh, 0.05 watts. That's unheard of. I think this is the lowest. Oh, maybe I had it at 0.3 watts on a. This is a 20 watt globe. But what I'm interested in. That spark gap, I can barely even see it. That, that spark gap, you can you just... There's no sound. So there's not no losses like that. There's minimal loss in the spark gap. And I've got resonance in that. That's, that's about as efficient as it's going to be. I've got to get my uh, signal oscilloscope out at some point and have a little play to see what's going on. But what I'm interested in doing is... Um, actually getting a fluoro tube pr probably a bigger one the inch thick ones and um, drilling a hole in the end and um, yeah somehow um, tapping uh, a thread into it with probably um, a fiberglass putty or epoxy or something like that and um, creating a vacuum in it still uh, see these have an actual I'll just turn a lot of them I'll just turn this off for a second. And these actually have a little little uh, filament in there, and that's what makes these go. But uh, as it's been shown by Jared Moran, look, 
it doesn't matter about the filament if you use high voltage high frequency they'll still glow um, you don't have to warm up the gas inside for it to kick off and go at 240 volts or 110 you do um, even though they go through transformers and they've got ballasts so they don't draw too much power and all sorts of things um, so basically you'll have that globe probably for life unless the ends rust out so what I want to do is I want to open up the bottom and uh, use some sort of solvent to get the phosphorus and mercury and everything out apparently they've got mercury gas in them a bit of fluoro gas and phosphorus so I want to wash that out so I've got a clear tube and then I can uh, whack a thread in there with a, a bit of hose and a um, uh, and, and vacuum the got uh, the gap uh, sorry put a vacuum in it and vacuum all air out of it maybe I can go down to two two um was it uh, 27 I think hg minus 27 uh maybe down to minus two um atmospheres I'm not sure what these globes can handle obviously small can probably handle better but um and I want to see the standing waves. Now, I've seen it with these fluoros before. I was just watching some content before about another guy. Um, if you if you look it up, um, fluoro tube just recently, very recently, or last week or something, um, you'll see standing waves in his video. It's really clear, and I want to do that with this too. I want to get it clear so I can see if there's anything else in the standing wave to be honest the phosphorus and might my, my actually help illustrate it but um uh yeah it's when i have a little play and see what i can come up with but yeah so that's a taser really tiny spark gap have these offset like that so you can pull one closely instead of trying to come in closer like that if it's offset like that you can push it round on this end and you got a lot more you can dial in a lot more um uh, better a lot more um, accurately and um, so taser I'm not sure if that's an 800 or 400,000 volt or what they claim but pretty high cop does that and then it's just going into this it doesn't need to go into this toroid um, I'm just playing around with it I'm going to actually disconnect the toroid and do it um, the other way now and see so the benefit of um, using this is it's supposed to uh, multiply the voltage by four but i'm thinking also that there's going to be losses and sometimes i can hear it so um any vibrations using energy and when you right down to 0.05 watts i mean it's not much energy more to use so i disconnect that um, it'll be running straight off the taser with the spark gap and we're going to see what we can come up with thanks for watching